Are you saving for a financial goal? I always wanted to own the Dallas Cowboys. Do you know how to make it realistic and achievable? I don't know. In this video, you will learn how to properly set and meet your financial goals. So if you want to increase the likelihood of success, watch this video till the end. What is a financial goal? A financial goal is any plan you have for your money. The most common examples will be paying off debt, saving for retirement, your children's education, a down payment on a house, or any other big purchases. So the first step is to choose a financial goal and put a dollar amount on it. So if it's paying off debt, the dollar amount is how much debt you owe. If it's a down payment on a house, you'll need to figure out how much that will need to be. Whatever your financial goal is, don't guess how much you'll need. Two dollars. You need to do research and be exact as possible. Once you have a specific financial goal and a dollar amount assigned, you can move on to the next step. Step two, make a budget. This will be one of the most important steps to successfully completing your goal. A budget is just a spending plan for your income. With a good budget in place, you'll know exactly how much discretionary income you have left every month. So if you follow your budget and can consistently save $500 every month, your monthly contributions can be $500 towards your financial goals. Now there's many different strategies for budgeting, so to help you with your budget, I'll leave a link to my budgeting video in the video description below. Step three, figure out your time horizon. All you gotta do is take the dollar amount of your financial goal and divide it by your monthly contributions. So if your goal is to reach $40,000 and you can contribute $500 a month, it will take you six years and eight months to reach this goal. Now this is without investing, but before you can add investing to the equation, you need to know expected returns. There are three types of financial goals. Long term, which is around 10 years or more. Medium term, which is from 3 to 9 years. And short term, which is anything less than 3 years. If stocks return an average of 10%, bonds return an average of 5%, we can create some estimated returns based on time horizon. Following a minimal risk maximum return asset allocation based on age, a very long time horizon of 20 years can possibly produce an average return of 7%. A long-term time horizon of around 10 years can produce 5%. A medium term around five years can produce around 3%. And if you have less than three years to invest, you shouldn't be invested in stocks or bonds. But you can still earn an average return of 2% using high interest savings accounts and GICs. Step four, now it's time to find an interest calculator or an investment calculator. There's many to choose from, but I really like the one from Canadian Western Bank. Using the same example from earlier, a $40,000 investment goal, seven years to accumulate, monthly contributions of $500, and now with a 3% return you get $46,718. So with the extra buffer in the end result, there is a better chance for success. Okay, but what if you think the time horizon is too long? You can find a way to make more income and or find ways to reduce your budget, leaving you with more discretionary income. Then try changing when you contribute. Instead of monthly, you could contribute weekly. You may also invest more aggressively, but this will increase your risk and reduce your chances for success. You can contribute in an initial investment, so funds added towards your financial goal at the beginning of your plan, and if you really got to, you can reduce your financial goal. The point is, you can play around with these numbers to find a plan that works better for you. If you want to increase your chances for success, you can lower your rate of return and increase your time horizon and contributions. But if you can't keep up with your contributions or need your funds in an emergency, your financial goal will be at greater risk. So to make sure you can keep up with contributions and won't need to dip into your financial goal, you need to have an emergency fund. Depending on your personal situation, you may need three to 12 months of living expenses. Having these emergency funds will increase the likelihood of you successfully completing your financial goal. And if you don't have one, that should be your first financial goal. Now, if you want to learn more about emergency funds, check out this video up here or look for the link in the video description. Why is having a financial goal so important? A financial goal gives you something to aim for, will keep you motivated, keep you accountable, and will make you feel accomplished. Without a financial goal plan in place, the likelihood of success will be minimal. Also, if you want to get into investing, your financial goal will help you determine your risk tolerance and time horizon, which is all important for finding your asset allocation for your investment portfolio. So watch this video here if you want to know what's the right asset mix for your portfolio. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep making money moves. Peace.